Assalamualaikum We are from group 3 We will explain for our assignment engineering material My name is Muhammad Fajani B. Ahmad My other member group is Siti Khadijah Binti Ismail Muhammad Abdul Hakim Aizam B. Muhammad Ramli Muhammad Fizwal Hakimi B. Muhammad Isa And lastly is Lee Jin Seh now, I will talk about the introduction for our assignment. Uh, material science defined as inve investigating relationship that exists between the structure and property of material. Material engineering defined as the basic of this structure property correlation designing or engineering the structure of a material to produce a predetermined set of properties. Uh, material science and engineering is a multidisciplinary activity that has a much uh, in recognizable form only during the past two decades. Practitioner in the field develop and work with the material that are used to make the produce uh, product like machine device and structure. Material science and engineering is concerned with the generation and application of knowledge relating the composition, structure and processing of materials to their properties and use. Material, energy and the environment are closely interrelated. Materials are the basic to manufacturing and service, and service technology. To national, to national security and to national and international economy. The housewife has seen her kitchen transformed by progress in material, vinyl polymer in flooring, stainless steel in sinks. The ordinary telephone content in it not so ordinary component 42 of the 92 national national Occurring element, uh, polytelling, polytelling and outstanding insulator for radar equipment in each one of the mirrored material. Vital to national defect by one of several possible uh, reckoning, production and forming of material account for some 20% of the nation gross national product, but the number is deceptive. Without material, we 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 would have no gross national product. Okay, that is all for my introduction. Now I will pass to my friend. Hi, my name is Muhammad Abdul Hakim Aizam bin Muhammad Ramli. My metric number is B zero nine one nine one zero three five nine. I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna describe about the background of the materials that we selected for this assignment. First of all, materials can be classified into many categories such as metals, polymer, ceramic, composite, electronic materials and other else. These materials are categorized according to the properties it possess. For the first materials that we selected is materials. Materials are chemicals, elements that are known generally for their metallic luxury, strength, hardness and ability to conduct heat and electricity. Metals are generally not used in their pure state but as mixtures of metals and non-metal constitute commonly referred to as alloy. Metals are generally hard, opaque and shiny materials that exhibit good electrical and thermal conductivity. They are generally malleable so that they can be shaped by hammering or pressing without breaking or cracking. Metals are also fusible, meaning 
they can be fused or melted and exhibit a ductility that makes it possible to stretch them out into a thin wire. Consequently, metals are important part of our life and can be found at every facet where they are used in high-rise buildings, bridge, construction, automobiles, tools, pipes, railways, and many other else. For the second material that uh, we are that we are selected is ceramics. Mm, ceramics is one of the areas of interest to a material scientist, and is the oldest branch of material science. A ceramic is a non-metallic solid made up of either metal or non-metal compounds that have been heated and cooled. In general, they are hard, corrosion resistant and brittle. Ceramics are a part of our everyday life without realizing it. We are surrounded by them from domestic and industrial building products such as tableware, art, all the way up to medical device. Ceramic hold a special place in history where they were initially used to craft pottery objects like pots and other hollow utensils. The last material that we are selected is polymer. Uh, polymer is a chemical compound with molecule bounded together in long repeating chains. Because of their structures, polymers have unique properties that can be tailored for different uses. Polymers are both man-made and naturally occurring. Some polymers bend and strange, like rubber and polyester. Others are hard and tough, like epoxies and glasses. Polymers that are capable of high extension under ambient conditions find important application as elastomers. In addition to natural rubber, there are several important synthetic elastomers including nitril and butyl rubber. A typical commercial plastic resin may contain two or more polymer in addition to various additives and fillers. These are added to improve a particular property such as processability, thermal or environmental stability or mechanical properties. We choose three examples from the material list to be compared which are metal, ceramic and polymer. We use the data from the tensile test for testing the properties of materials. A tensile test is a physical experimental evaluation performed on material to determine their suitability for specific engineering or construction application to ensure quality. That's all from me. Thank you. Assalamualaikum and selamat sejahtera. I'm going to present two parts in this assignment, which is Planning of experiment and methodology. For the planning of experiment, after we receive the assignment questions, we discuss among our group members and find out the requirement of the assignment. Next, we find the factors to classify the materials, which are metals, polymers, and ceramics. These classes can be differentiated with each other through their physical or chemical properties. We are doing the research on the physical and chemical properties of the material and the possible way to classify them. Then, determine the variables during the discussion, which is first, constant variable, the apparatus, machine, or way to test the materials. Second, independent variable, the test specimens. And third, dependent variable, the correlation of the data based on each materials. Then, 
discussion will conduct in many ways will suggest the, the possibilities where analysis to choose the right choice for example separation method was suggested but it is more suitable for sorting purpose only but not suitable for classification and recognize the materials finally in order to differentiate this material our group members decide to perform the tension test by using the universal testing machine for the methodology we have two parts which is selection of materials and selection of testing method and apparatus in this assignment we have chosen three specimens from the three categories which is metals ceramics and polymers our group member has chosen now in metal category ceramic plate in ceramic category bottle plastic in polymer category for selection of testing method in specimen for tensile test all the test specimen of the material will be machined in this shape it has a large ends and shoulder for gripping the important part of the specimen is get section the cross sectional area of the get section is reduced relative to that of the remainder of the specimen so that the deformation and failure will be localized in this region the gate length is the region over which measurements are made and is center within the reduced section the distance between the ends of the gate section and the soldiers should be great enough so that the larger ends do not constrain deformation within the gate sections and the gate length should be great relative to its diameter otherwise the stress state will be more complex than simple tension for the test machine it is to test the tensile strength or compressive strength of the materials testing machines are either electrochemical or hydraulic the principal difference is the method by use the load is applied electrochemical machines are based on the variable speed electric motor a gear reduction system and one two or four screw that move the cross head up or down this motion locks its specimen in tension or compression cross head speed can be changed by changing the speed of motor for the last one experimental steps specimen is machined in the desired orientation and according to the standards aluminum steel or composite materials can be used as the specimen material mostly. Magnitude of the loss is chosen with respect to the tensile strength of the material. Specimen is fit to the test machine. Maximum load is recorded during testing. After fracture of the material, final gauge length and diameter is measured. Diameter should be measured for the neck. The necessary data for calculation will be recorded in this table the collision data is then used to calculate the modulus of elasticity using this formula thank you hello my name is muhammad fadjani b ahmad now i will explain to you about my part my part is about uh, recorded evidence the recorded evidence is the scientific study of the property and application of materials of construction or manufacture such as uh, ceramic, metal, polymer and composite. Uh, for the recorded evidence, we have uh, discussed to choose the material which is metals, ceramic and polymer as our material uh, okay so to identify and record the data 
we will we will use the table of modulus of electricity as our way to get the data by comparing between the other three. The example for the common household item that we choose is for the first is bottle plastic for polymer. Second is uh, snare for metal and third is ceramic plate for ceramic. After that, by using the modulus of electricity, we can get the theoretical value for ceramic, polymer and metal. So, after we get the data, we can compare between each material. After we compare the material, we get 2.7 gigapascal for polymer. Uh, then we get 207 gigapascal for metal. And lastly, we get 90 gigapascal for ceramic. Now, uh, that is all for my part. Thank you. Assalamualaikum and selamat sejahtera. My name is Siti Khadijah Binti Ismail and I'm going to present about discussion on the observation. When it comes to metal steel, the mechanical properties of the grade of it can often mean the difference between a long, efficient life in the most abrasive and wear intensive applications. Properties that are most important in wear and abrasion resistance steel are hardness, toughness, yield strength and tensile strength. From the data that have been collected, the steel have the theoretical value of 207 gigapascal for modulus of elasticity. It shows that the steel is quite stiff because the stiffer the steel, the higher the value modulus of elasticity. The thickness and shape of the material also contributes to its stiffness. It also can be determined by looking at the graph at the slope of elastic region. From the stress strain curve for steel as shown in the report, it shows that the steel will undergo elastic region first until it reach the point of elastic limit and change to plastic region which is it cannot return back to its original shape or position. It will undergo strain hardening to resist the stress on the material. Lastly, the material will reach to the maximum point which is called as ultimate stress then undergo necking and break. For ceramics, aluminium oxide or known as alumina, it is one of the most cost effective and widely used material in the family of engineering ceramics. With an excellent combination of properties and an attractive price, it is no surprise that fine grain technical grade alumina has a very wide range of applications. The properties is hardware, good thermal conductivity, excellent size and shape capability, high strength and stiffness. Alpha phase alumina is the strongest and stiffest of the oxide ceramics. It also have high strength and stiffness quite similar with steel as explained before. It has a theoretical value of 90 gigapascal for modulus of elasticity. A certain application is needed to measure and monitor the change of stress in the thermally grown oxide layer to understand the oxidation resistance where the elastic properties that show the response to an applied macroscopic stress are required to study. From the stress strain curve in the report, it doesn't show the material undergo necking and break at the end, so we can classify alumina is extremely strong, hard and brittle. It is also due to narrow elastic region. For the last material which is polymer, polyethylene terephthalate is the most widely used thermoplastic polymer for fabricated parts and components. In addition, polyethylene are lightweight, easily processed and often near zero moisture absorption. 
poly poly polyethylene terephthalate or PET is the chemical name for polyester. PET is a clear, strong and lightweight plastic that is widely used for packaging foods and beverages, especially convenient size soft drinks, juice and water. It is usually thermoplastic, however, it can be modified to become thermosetic instead. For example, in cross-linked polyethylene. The modulus of elasticity is 2.7 GPa, which is of low strength, hardness and rigidity, but has a high ductility and impact strength as well as low friction. It shows strong creep under persistent force, which can be reduced by addition of short fiber. In conclusion, the polyethylene undergo permanent deformation through elongation or bending without fracturing and deform plastically under tensile load. Thank you. Assalamualaikum dan selamat jatuh. My name is Mohd Zakimi bin Moiset. For this task assignment, we chose the material which are Mild steel is the nails uh, Ceramic Ceramic plate And for polymer, we chose also, and for the con conclusion for this assignment, which are test cell testing is a way of determining how something will react when it is pulled apart when a force is applied to it. Tension. Test cell is one of the simplest and most widely used mechanical test by measuring the force required to elongate a specimen to a breaking point. Materials properties can be determined that will allow designers and quality managers to predict how materials and product will behave in their intended applications. For ceramics, which are we chose the ceramic plates, aluminum oxide exhibits the highest value of measures of elasticity, and this shows that ceramic have high hardness and high melting point, but they are very brittle. It is difficult to measure the yield strength of ceramic as they tend to fracture before they enter the plastic deformation region. Tensile tests of brittle ceramics are usually not performed. It is too difficult to shape these materials into the proper test structure, difficult to craft the bitter material without breaking it, and it is difficult to align the test samples to avoid bending stresses which can destroy the sample. Ceramics have high compressive strengths about 10 times higher than their tensile strength. The tensile strength of ceramic is low because existing flaws, which are internal or surface cracks, act as stress concentrators. For polymers, which shows the bottle, polyethylene shows the lowest value of modulus of elasticity. As polymer materials have high typical lower densities and may be extremely flexible as the material is pulled further, fracture occurs. Stress value when fracture occurs is defined as the tensile strength of a polymer material. This material exhibits rubber like elasticity and will turn to their original shape and form unless they are extended to a point of fracture. For metals, we chose the nails. Mass steel especially desirable for construction due to its weldability and machinability. Because of its high strength and malleability, it is quite soft. This means that it can be easily machined compared to harder steels. While steel is very strong due to low amount of carbon it contains, mass steel tensile strength has the maximum amount of stress a material can withstand while being stretched or pulled without breaking. Many engineering applications that require high tensile strength normally use mild steel. This is because of the crystalline structure of mild steel that allows it to withstand hard edge loads before fracture can occur. Aluminum, however, has found many uses in design that require low density materials like in aerodynamics. Aluminium experiences high ductility rates compared to mass steel and have therefore low level value of young modulus. A factor that determines deflections in structural components. 
Thank you. Peace.